and welcome back to Char Reads. Um, this is my May review video. I do have a dog. My He's just lower on my lap than usual. Um, and the Grand Prix starts in 18 minutes, so we're gonna power through this. I only read three books in March. I think this is the fewest books I've read in a month in quite a few years. I don't really know why. <laughs> to be fair, one was very long, but I'm just kind of saddened that I don't have a pace with reading that I used to have. Uh, I'm not sure I'm really gonna get it back. I do think it is largely down to this boy um, that I haven't had or been putting in as much time, but I would like to. It has also made me feel like I need to be really intentional about the books I choose to read because I'm only gonna get through so many, uh, which is causing a lot of conflict. Okay, so let's get going. Um, the first book I have to talk about is Jews Don't Count by David Baddiel. Um, I have a full length video up about this. It's about anti-Semitism. It is not a white nationalist book. But David Deal is a Jewish writer and comedian. He just reached a level of frustration with seeing all of this flagrant anti-Semitism and seeing people not respond to it in the same way that they should. Um, so he wrote this book to talk about um, how, uh, how Jews are treated across society and why um, then why like anti-Semitism doesn't have the same level of, um, I was about to say respect, that's the wrong word, isn't treated as seriously as other forms of racism. I think it did a pretty good job. It definitely opened my eyes to a lot of things I hadn't really thought about or needed to confront. But I do think it came from like a very personal, quite defensive place. Uh, which did make it like, well, it's definitely not a very evergreen read considering how many screenshots of tweets are in it. Um, but I read this for my book club and it promoted a really interesting uh, discussion about uh, like a lot of a lot of things about contemporary politics and about racism in general. So yeah, I would I would definitely recommend it if you feel like anti-Semitism is a bit of a blind spot for you as well. Next book I have to talk about is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Oh God, I didn't look up how to pronounce that. I'm sorry, Tamsin. Uh, this came out in 2019 and it is the first of the Locked Tomb trilogy. The second one is out. I think the third one is to be released next year. It's really hard for me to explain the context of this book, but basically it's like a classic YA thriller where um, you get a bunch of kids and pit them against each other, but actually like the system's corrupt. Um, but in the context of some really cool magic systems to do with necromancy, um, and some really badass characters and some very good character interactions. I was also surprised in that it was, um, it's quite a formulaic like way of writing a YA book now. It's not necessarily, it like, wasn't The Hunger Games, um, but you know, getting a bunch of young people in a situation where they suddenly have um, way more responsibility than they, than they should uh, and have to figure a load of things out. I feel like that's such a formula that I was kind of surprised that it really kind of pushed the boundaries a bit. Like there are certain things that you think are pretty safe in that realm. And then this just kind of oversteps some stuff in a way that made it really a lot more exciting and mysterious. I thought it was really fun. I really like Gideon and Harrow Hark, who's a kind of sister frenemy sort of role. I can't say I really like the whole necromantic death vibes i've said on this channel before i work in a funerals company um so i do think about death a fair bit but this is very kind of like naively fetishistic of death stuff like lots of bones and blood and skulls and <laughs> i don't know it just kind of felt like an odd kind of veneer on top of this story that not really my vibe but probably lots of people's. I found it really fun. I might read the rest of it uh, after the third one comes out. Um, but yeah, if you want something a bit silly. It does say on the front, lesbian necromancers explore haunted gothic palace in space, which I think is an exaggeration because her being a lesbian doesn't really come into it that much. Space, again, doesn't really come into it that much, but this pretty, it's pretty badass, like haunted gothic palace necromancers. Like that's quite cool. And that was the second book I read this month. The third one is The Chonk, and that is The Overstory by Richard Powers, one that I've had on my shelves for years and never got around to, just slightly intimidated by the size. Um, but I thought it was fantastic. So this won the Pulitzer, it was nominated for the Booker Prize shortlisted, whatever. Um, and I thought it was really great. It was all about trees and it was about forest conservancy um, and it had a load of different types of characters coming from really different places and um, 
coming together. The first third was sort of short stories introducing you to all of the characters and then the rest is how they all sort of converge. Um, I did a longer video about this talking about <laughs> my love of nature <laughs> and, uh, and about consumerism um, and about the sort of like what this book leaves you with a bit more. So link down below if you'd like to watch that. Sorry for the short video and short month, but um, you know, the Grand Prix awaits me. Um, I hope you had a good month and I will see you in the next one. Bye.